It was tall, closer to three meters than two, with two arms and what appeared to be two legs beneath its dark, hooded robe. But any similarities to humanity vanished once you saw its exposed flesh. Its hands, in one which it clutched a corroded scepter, were both masses of maggots, and where the face of a human would be was simply a blank mass of writhing worms. The Sloth are an obscure race of Xenos known for their unending maliciousness. Also known as the Maggot Men, they are the bane of the Ordo Xenos, with many unspeakable horrors carried out by their legion, always in the secrecy of criminal rings and isolated hideouts. This is not to say that the Sloth are incompetent in the martial arts, as each of them tower even over Goliaths and Space Marines, and possess extraordinary speed, power, and near immortality. Their bodies are a collage of writhing maggots and necrotic mucus, each worm drenched in a bile that effortlessly eats through ceramite armor. Even their technology is more advanced than we can comprehend. Symbiotic techno-organic creatures, products of nightmarish science for the sloth's purposes. Known by many other names in the shady back streets and hushed whispers, the sloth do not seek to conquer the Imperium in a bloody all-out war. Instead, they seek to exploit and manipulate Imperial society in efforts of a malicious and alien agenda. Even their numbers cannot be properly ascertained, as while the Sloth are careful to mask their operatives in Imperial space, but many researchers in the Inquisition theorize that the Sloth hail from a region of space beyond the trailing halo stars, where an endless tide of these abominations must surely lurk, waiting patiently for their chance to strike at a vulnerable Imperium. Even now, within the Calixus sector, their agents are rumored to operate within the infamous Amaranthine Syndicate, the sector's most infamous band of cutthroats, smugglers, and backdoor dealers. The Sloth have been skirmishing in a secret war for thousands of years, but they were large players in the redacted history of the three campaigns known as the Rangdon Xenocides, which took place in the Emperor's Great Crusade. The Xeno species called the Rangda were noted to employ something called Sloth Murder Mines, which insinuates that either the Rangda and the Sloth may have either cooperated in a joint effort, or one species may have enslaved the other, although the details are lost to time. Regardless, the Rangda and the Sloth were defeated in the end, but they proved to be such dangerous and horrific foes that the Emperor himself had to come stomp the life out of them, backed up by three entire Space Marine Legions Imperial Knights, Titans, the Admech, and the Imperial Guard. Goddamn. So with all this about the Sloth, they must have some pretty cool models, right? Well, they don't. There are no official Sloth models at all. Hell, there's barely even unofficial Sloth models. A few decent ones seen on Google Images, but that's about it. We've got some sculpts and some STLs, but hey, you know, I, I can count them all on one hand. So let's hurry up and make some Sloth minis of our own. I initially started to sculpt my own mini from a wire and foil armature, but as I finished, I wanted to try converting an existing mini into a sloth. Then after that, I figured I'd never get a chance to work on this for a long time, so I even delayed this video uh, even further to make two more minis. The infamous sloth harvester construct and the sloth warrior construct. Four minis for the price of one, I'd say I'm kind of spoiling you guys. If you feel like returning the favor, you could try subscribing to the channel. It really goes a long way in helping the channel grow. Uh, depending on the project, it can take a long time to make these videos, and I'd really like to hit 5k before the end of the year, and it would be very nice if you guys could help me get there. But yeah, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll get on it. The sloth are stated to stand 3 meters tall, so for my armature I start my sketch by comparing it to a custode from my custodian guard kill team, because that's about they're about 9 feet tall. This will allow me to get the height and proportions for the sloth in order before I start building. For that building process I use some leftover twisted wire I had for some other project. After securing them together with some green stuff, I proceeded to use aluminum foil to bulk up the model and save on clay. Although I did flub a bit here and made them a little bit too skinny, uh, that's okay. It just adds to the slightly off human silhouette that bumps up the creep factor or at least that's what I'm telling myself to help cope. After securing the armature to a 40mm base, I take a second to roll out a flat piece of green stuff 
and let it cure while I sculpt the under robe section. I've used this plastic bag for all my grain stuff rolling, but I never laid it on the printed part, which ended up causing some interesting issues. You see, after I sculpted the under robe, I went to peel off the green stuff, and the bag's printed label came off with it. And I'm thinking, oh no, it's fucked. But I decided to just throw it on anyways to see if the printed bits that were stuck on would lend an interesting texture to the robes. The funny thing is, after the model was made and spray primed, that bit of the bag that peeled up just disappeared entirely. What was an attempt to lean into an accident ended up vanishing altogether which was just weird and reinforced my opinion that this project was haunted to some degree. Nevertheless, the green stuff was put onto the model in waves to give the appearance of the fabric rippling and bunching. This is still something I'm not really good at, but I did pick up on how to lay and fold the fabric a bit better, so at the very least, it was good practice. I, I still came out of it with something. And now for the meat of the project, the maggots. The sloth are beings made of a gorillion maggots in a trench coat, mainly to sneak into R-rated movies. I couldn't think of a good way to go about this besides the obvious, so the obvious was the route I took. I rolled out a very thin cylinder of green stuff and got to placing the maggots on one after the other. One trick I picked up on was to cut the maggot off, then give it a quick roll on the table to taper the harsh edges left by the knife. This really helped sell the look of the piece being an individual maggot and not just a chunk of a tube. I also took care to try and place a variety of maggots on the model in various directions and poses. I found going for a large variety helped sell the uh, the look, I guess, the aesthetic. But yeah, this was very boring work. Um, just put on a movie or something you want to watch and uh, just spend a couple minutes doing it. It's really not as bad as it sounds, honestly. Like, overall, this one mini took me like... I don't know, maybe 15, 20 minutes, and I was working kind of slow. Now I know what a few of you are thinking, why not just coil the entire cylinder on the model? Well, we can see that line of thinking here on someone else's attempt here on Google. This is a mini made by Strymon on the Daka Daka forums, and this sloth was made in that manner. While it's a very cool idea of a sloth's maggot swarm jumping from his disguise, the large bundles of rope simply don't sell the aesthetic of maggots to me. It looks like a bundle of longer creatures, like uh, like really long worms or centipedes or even snakes. Uh, actually, shit, that sounds horrifying. Snakes instead of maggots? Fuck that. <laughs> when I layered the maggots onto the mini, I found it easier to work from the bottom of the area you're working on and then work up. Not only did this make attaching the maggots physically easier to do with the little press of a toothpick, but it helped achieve the layer look as the maggots could rest and drape naturally on the maggots underneath. I filled in the area of this one as one big pile. Um, although sloth are noted in their art to be depicted as bipedal, like they've got, you know, separate stompers, uh, I figured one big pile wouldn't be out of the ordinary for them either. You know, they're shapeshifters, whatever. After filling out the foot area, I fill in the chest and face area, again working from the bottom up. When all the maggots were set, I rolled out a triangle of green stuff and draped it over the mini's head to make the hood. Uh, the triangle I made here was way too small and I didn't have enough material to let it bunch up and fold like a robe, but I decided to just keep moving forward and try my best to make sure I don't run into that problem down the road. The reference picture I was using was a sloth holding a mask and a bundle of other objects, and I really liked it, so I decided to simply recreate that artwork. To do that, I needed a mask. Luckily, instead of having to sculpt one, which, honestly, not that hard, I had a spare uh, mask from a Harlequin player for my bits box I could use. I attached it to the end of the arm with some green stuff and super glue, and while that was curing, I turned my attention to the his scepter. The scepter are noted to be corroded in the text, but the artwork was really smooth. So I opted to turn some more wire and use that as the shaft to help give it a little more visual interest. Although in retrospect, it's a little on the skinny side. I opted to leave the fishbone spikes on the end off though. It was way too fiddly and I knew at this point I was already falling behind. So I just decided to move on. For his tome, I glued together a sandwich of styrene scraps and cut some cardboard from an old Coca-Cola box. Wrapping that cardboard around the sandwich and trimming it down produced a tome with a bit of a surface texture. 
I used liquid super glue to reinforce the cardboard and sculpted some tome details on the like the corners and the edge. And with that done, I attached it all to his hip with some green stuff. After the tome was in place, I attached some scrolls as well. Uh, these were just little strips of post-it notes soaked in a drop of super glue. With the bundle of items done, I smacked on a big blob of green stuff to make the arms of his robe. I used a metal sculpting tool to cut the folds into the robe, then a silicone tool to smooth out the cuts. After that, it was just a matter of laying on more maggots, really. Slow and steady, with a nice variety of shapes and directions and wiggles. While I think I got the essence of the artwork on my mini, I wasn't super happy with the robes. That's when my eyes spotted something. A necromancer that's been sitting on my desk for months now. Uh, this was included in the box one of my friend Aaron from Sub and Lesser Maker. Uh, we did a mini swap collab together, which you should totally go watch the videos for, by the way. Uh -huh. It then kind of occurred to me, could I just convert any spellcaster into a sloth? This one was way easier than just sculpting it uh, from scratch. I just used my clippers to trim off his face and his facial hair, uh, and then I used my knife to shave down his hands. Then, just as the other one, rolling out green stuff and pressing on maggots. Not only was this mini faster, you know, just because it was a conversion, but I liked the result a lot more. I figured you can kind of convert anything with robes into a sloth like this, like maybe poach something from Warhammer Fantasy or Age of Sigmar's like uh, Night Haunt range or even like third party kits like Frostgrave Wizards or in this case Reaper Bones, you know. So that's it, right? Project done? Eh, well, not quite. The sloth are known users of horrific biotechnical constructs for various purposes. Two noted examples are the Harvester Construct and the Warrior Constructs. And I like, come on, what am I ever going to get the chance to make or talk about these down the line? I might as well do the Sloth stuff in the Sloth video, you know? Um, I'm going to start with the Harvester Construct, and I will be the first person to say that I wildly misinterpreted their physical description. They are described as, quote, Hovering asymmetrical columns of mottled fungal fungal looking flesh shot through with pulsing veins and lattices of metal threadwork and crystalline studs. Their heads are no more than clusters of waving frond-like sensory growths and skeletal pincer limbs erupt from their body mass as needed. So okay, that reads fairly straightforward, um, but this description from the Alfarius novel also reinforces their physical shape as a gigantic slab of flesh. Well, for some reason, I completely fucking missed that line out being a slab of meat and interpreted the physical description as an asymmetrical bundle of meat pillars connected to metal columns by the aforementioned metal lattice work. So yes, my harvester construct is wrong, but I liked how it came out anyways, so maybe it's like some kind of variant. I don't feel like it really stands out too much. Like, you could have a horde of these guys ranging from what I've made to the slab of meat and any kind of gradient between there, you know? And I think it would still look cohesive. Or maybe he's the special one. This one picks up, like, I don't know, cigarette butts or something. Regardless of the accuracy of this model, it was fairly easy to make. Uh, it was made out of these little metal earring pins, mainly because they had this little head that looks like a big nail. Uh, and then a bunch of green stuff and styrene rods, particularly square-shaped ones. The flesh pillars in particular I really like, and they were made by rolling a tube of green stuff, much like I did the maggots, then wrapping it around the earring pin's position for support. I then smoothed and worked the shape into bulbs and folds, being careful not to work the shape too much and kind of homogenize it. Basically all I did was smooth the putty to close the gaps between the cylinder that I wrapped around it and then bumped it a few times and generally just kind of left it as it was. Overall, this was pretty easy to make, if not, you know, inaccurate. But one thing I will say that it is like shockingly durable. I dropped this thing like nine times. For how this thing looks, the thing's built like a tank. Well, okay, maybe, maybe, maybe not like a tank, maybe like a very spirited APC or something. Next up is the warrior construct. 
This one I didn't fuck up because there's actually a picture of this thing. You ever see one of those videos where people get like those tentacles in a box and they strap a knife to it and then they can't turn it off because it's got a knife? Imagine like six of those on a tripod and you've got the warrior construct. The physical size of this thing was a bit questionable though as there were no clear passages that stated it, but it was big enough to kill a Lernaean Terminator so we'll make it fit a 40mm base. I made the legs out of stacked styrene scraps, not really caring too much for carving out a nice shape. As long as it looks like you could stab and step at the same time, I was in the money. I used larger styrene tubes to make the joint of the legs, connecting them with paper clips as the meat of the limb support. After bulking them up with green stuff, I cut very small discs of a smaller diameter styrene rod to act as covers for the joints. I found the easiest way to do this was to lay the disc on, dab it lightly with extra thin cement, then adjust its position before the cement fixed it into place permanently. The body of the warrior construct was built off of a small uneven wad of tin foil I found under my desk, again making sure not to work the clay too much to preserve an organic shape. To make the head, I rolled a tube of the stuff and coiled it on top of the body. You remember making coil pots in like art class? That's essentially what we're doing here, although I did it in high school as well. I took pottery class twice, once because I needed an art credit, and once again because every cute girl took pottery class. I was dating someone at the time, but hey, between a room full of cute girls I was actually friends with, and taking another round of piano with a teacher that hated me for some reason I will never know, it was an easy choice. Anyways, I took a small bit of wire and shoved them into the folds of the coiled maw we just made being mindful to do this step before the green stuff cured. After that, I wrapped green stuff around thin wire and made tentacles separately, the ones with wire exposed out of them at the end, eventually being bent into a hook. These were attached to the maw with super glue and blended into the mini with green stuff. I tend to use a lot more yellow than blue in my green stuff mix when it comes to steps like this because it makes it much softer and easier to blend. Okay, that's four minis for the price of one. I'm not going to spend too long on painting this since it's dragging on, so here are the highlights. The sloth's robes were painted brown and shaded purple to give it a nice base color, then I dry brushed it with tan. I used two shades of purple to paint the trim of the robe as well. Uh, while basing the maggots in a brownie tan may make sense if I'm painting them in a tan, I opted for a dark gray to set me up for something later while also filling in the bits that the primer missed. For the fleshy bits of the constructs, I painted them a tan and add color with some washes, mainly red, blue, purple, and yellow. At first, I was trying to be careful with it how I applied these washes, but before realizing that the chaotic, haphazard application is not only faster, but would probably look a little more better and natural, so I just started stabbing colors in spots. The bases were simple, dusty, kind of grassland, foot of the mountain areas like depicted in the original source image. Nothing complicated with some army painter tufts scattered around, but when everything was fixed into place, I broke out the Nurgle's Rot technical paint. I never get to use this stuff, so it's always fun to crack open this pot, being the method I'll be using to depict the necrotic bile that these uh, Xenos seem to leak, for lack of a better word. For some spots, I applied it straight out of the pot, but for places with detail like the faces and hands, I opted to water it down a bit, the dark gray base coat from earlier producing harsher and more readable recesses, or at least that's what I think from my testing. With that, we slap some black on the base rims and call it a day. And here we have the completed forces of the sloth. Honestly, the sloth have always been a favorite of mine in the realm of obscure minor Xenos, and I've been wanting to make sloth models for almost two years now. While I'm satisfied with the now scratch-built art replica, I really like the converted sloth necromancer thing more, and it's both faster and easier to convert. I also really like how my constructs came out. Even if the harvester construct isn't accurate to the official description, like I said, he picks up cigarette butts or something. He's got a special job. With how easy it is to convert any wizard looking character into a basic sloth, I would genuinely be interested in extending this into a full scale army down the line. And I mean 
down, down the line. I really don't need another army project right now. Um, I don't really know what rules they would use, though. Probably, like, Death Guard. That makes sense. You know, you got a lot of, you know, the constructs can use Poxwalker rules and the Sloth or, like, Plague Marines. You know, you get a little creative there, but I think that would work out. Or, I guess, Tyranid as well. That would at least still be a Xeno, but... Yeah, I'm 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 fine with reflavoring something if need be. Either way, I hope you guys like this focus on what a 40k's more interesting minor races. I've got a whole lot more I plan on looking at at some point, but until then, I really appreciate you guys watching my video. Uh, if you think I earned a subscription, hit that button. Um, like I said, I want to hit 5k, and I need you guys' help for that. I plan on doing a whole lot more spotlight videos on minor factions in the future. I think it's safe to say it's kind of a side quest at this point, side series. Um, but until then, thank you for watching and take care till next time. I have had two hours of sleep, so I am going to pass out on the couch now. Goodbye.